This is the Voices of Indie podcast hosted by Josh Gillespie. Voices of Indie is a show dedicated to giving you the opportunity to know the musical, visual, and theatrical arts of Indianapolis, Indiana. This week's guest is visual artist Megan Jefferson. And tonight's live stream is sponsored by Indianapolis Independent Entertainment. IIE LLC's goal is to help grow local DIY artists, freelancers, and businesses within Indianapolis and generate more paying creative opportunities. Their mission is simple, to establish a network of creatives who excel in areas of need and connecting them with other network members. This way, they can help to expand the local art and music scenes. IIE believes that by eliminating some of the intimidating barriers within the, within the entertainment industry, more opportunities will be produced for local freelancers and businesses. This will help Indianapolis become the place to go for art and music in the Midwest. If you're interested in learning more, go to their website, www.indieindient.com. That's I-N-D-Y-I-N-D-I-E-E-N-T.com and fill out a free application to discuss how you and I-E- IIE can redefine making it together. One of these days I'm going to get that done perfectly <laughs> and it'll surprise me and I won't know what to do afterwards. Megan, thank you for being on the podcast this week. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I've, I've been an admirer of your work now for a while and the first time that I came across it, I was running up and down the moat on. And at first I saw the wings. And I was like, oh, that's that's cool. That was like a different take, you know, on, on what you typically see with wing murals. Yeah. Um, it was it was much more eye-catching. And I was like, oh, hey, there's, there's a name. Okay, let's make sure. And I remember posting that to Instagram and making sure that I caught the artist featured on that. And then... I come to realize, especially as I'm looking at your portfolio earlier today, you have countless, seemingly, murals on the Monon. Um, and you're not just a muralist. You do everything, kind of. So, I mean, first of all, before we get into that, uh, because you're very prolific, um, give us a little bit about, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your history? Um, how did you get to Indianapolis? So I have been an artist my whole life, like most artists, but I did go um, to Miami University and I have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts. Um, actually, I met my husband when we were in high school in art class, mm -hmm. and he also went to Miami and was an art major. So we um, have both have been practicing artists since our early teenage years Very cool. and then he went on to get his master's and after he did that he was offered a job here at the heron school of art and design which is what brought us to indianapolis Fantastic. so we moved here 20 years ago and we've been here ever since wow well that's a quick summation of a story but that is that is neat so both you and your husband are artists i did notice that Corey jefferson is yep, his name that's right and he does a different kind of art He's a ceramic artist, yeah. so he works in sculpture and ceramics, and he teaches in the ceramics department at Heron. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you touch on so many different styles within your art. Um, like I said, I've known you for your murals. Um, we talked to you about possibly doing a mural. I know uh, we've. There are um, just so many different things that that when I look at your portfolio that you have done both in home, in business, um, I mean, you come up with some very creative and, and outside the box kind of creations that I think, golly, no one's ever gonna want, especially in a home, I'm thinking like, like you, for your, you have one for 2022 in your, in your um, profile for 2022. Um, there's this fantastic mural that you have over a baby crib. I'm thinking, heaven help the parents who ever paint over that. <laughs> because it is fantastic and it's very intricate. So, um, what is your inspiration? Like, what, what... First, let's talk about the murals. Okay. What, 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 um, what goes into the inspiration behind that? Because, you, like I said, you have so many different kinds. I am, I do. I love to explore so many different themes and so many different materials. I think that my favorite material is paint, and that can be any kind of paint. So I like acrylic, I like oils, I like watercolors, and then I just find that I follow a thread of my interest, and mm -hmm. that has just led me down so many different paths. I love working 
um, large scale. I love the impact that it has. So murals have become a really good way for me to have an impact, you know, in a public environment and then also transforming people's homes inside and out. Yeah, you, you really have. I mean, you, you've, I, when you look at the, um, the samples that you have, and I'm gonna pull up your website, and I encourage everyone, if you're gonna watch this on YouTube later, uh, I will have this listed. I will, people will be able to see it, but if you're listening to this, go to Megan's website, jeffersonartstudio.com, and you can check out her portfolio. But when we pull up interior murals, uh, and we'll start there first, like we're looking at children's rooms, we're looking at hallways and like basically taking entire front rooms of houses and it's everything, literally. You you take everything. I mean, I don't think, I guess when I look at this, I'm not thinking, you know, like someone's gonna do a whole big mural in their house, but oh my goodness, not only are there significant numbers of murals, um, you do them everywhere and including in businesses and um, there, there was one that you didn't have on here okay. that I remember seeing in your physical portfolio book that you have in your studio at uh -huh. the Harrison Center that was at a yoga studio, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And that was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I really enjoyed that beautiful. one. Um, but tell me a, a little bit about this, this series right here. And so when, if, if people know what I'm talking about, and again, I'll have this displayed on the YouTube channel. But um, is this in a home? That is. So that was a project that I did for the Home Decorators Showcase. Okay. Where they, um, a, it's an amazing, the St. Margaret's Guild is a nonprofit that's existed here in Indianapolis and they raise money for Eskenazi Hospital. Mm -hmm. And they take a home and the homeowners agree to let them have the space and they assign, <clears throat> excuse me, they assign a different room to a different designer, and then that designer showcases what they do. Oh, wow. So there are a number of different designers in this one home? Yes. And that was a 10,000 square foot home. Wow. And so... Um, you got a significant space here. I did. That's a huge hallway in the basement, and then that beautiful staircase kind of mm -hmm. winding up here with that pretty window right there. was also There's... part of that space. So working with the designs that were happening around that room and also with the homeowner's love of her specific type of flowers mm -hmm. i came up with that design that so a lot beautiful. of my designs are are very client focused mm -hmm. you know sometimes they see a past work of mine that they really like and say i would love to have something like that in this space or they invite me um, to come over and just say, what is your vision? What do you think would work really well here? Mm -hmm. Or they say, I really want X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then I come up with a design. And every single project is so exciting because I get to come up with a creative solution. And that is one of my favorite things about art. So it's not that I always just want or focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. It's like I come up with the best solution for that space for that client. That is, and, and it, is this what the the way that we're talking about with the window? That is this part of this as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, that had to be quite the solution. Now, did you said that the homeowners they did talk to you a bit? Yeah. So you incorporated their love of flowers. She I'm loved sorry. roses. She loved the color peach. Um, and then the, the stairwell winded up into the kitchen where there were um, darker colors and heavier colors. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to keep that stairwell really light and airy, which is why I transitioned into a different color in that space. Okay, I can see that here as it starts right there at the bottom yeah. of that staircase as it works its way up. That is, that is fascinating. And I mean, you say that, you know, you've done work for people like they'll come out and say that I like what you've done here but it the thing that I've noticed is that there is there oh wait a minute that's the that's the yoga studio there yes. I missed that okay sorry that's okay I'm gonna post that also to YouTube on the on the video so that people see that one because this is a very cool art piece um, at this particular studio um, but 
back to um, how people get the the uh, back to the the concept of working with the, the client. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I've noticed about your work is that even if they do like something, what something that you've done, mm -hmm. you're still able to give them a very unique um, design. Sure. So that it still stands out. To oh what, yeah. To what and you're that's doing. important. And you mm -hmm. know. As an artist, you learn from every single project, mm -hmm. and it's fun to build on that. So, for example, that yoga studio piece, mm -hmm. I had created a few murals that were similar in maybe different colors, and one of the homeowners from one of the murals that I created took a photo of the light streaming in through the window, and that's iridescent metallic paint dripping down the wall there. And when the light hits that, it just, it shimmers and there's an iridescent quality and it's really magical. Oh. But it also casts some other colors onto mm -hmm. the wall. And that photograph actually inspired the colors in this piece. So it was taken, you know, to the next level by adding some more colors and, and keeping it really soft and abstract. Yet it sort of feels ethereal and cloud-like. Mm -hmm. No, perfect. it definitely does. Oh, it, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. I really, I really like that. Um, you. you're welcome. Um, I want to talk about this mural that you have mm -hmm. in the Indianapolis International Airport. Sure. Um, was this a commissioned piece? So the Arts Council during COVID worked with the airport to come up with a creative solution because so many of the storefronts were closed. Mm -hmm. So they had all of these empty storefronts and, and decided to, um, ask artists to, use their pieces to put murals all over those storefront glass windows. Mm -hmm. And so those were actually, they asked for pieces that were already completed. So that piece oh. right there is from a painting that I completed. Oh, really? And then it was printed out on a clear perforated vinyl sheet that they then applied to the glass. So you took one of your regular paintings that you do and you turned it into a mural. Yeah, and what's really astonishing is the piece that that came from is only about 18 inches by 24 inches. Oh, really? And then that part of the mural is actually it's only- huge. It's only about a seven inch strip in the middle of that painting oh, that was then expanded into be that mural, which I think is really effective. It's simple, it's beautiful. You can see the brush strokes. There's mm -hmm. some blending of colors and some soft, really soft motion, which is something that appeals to me to include in all of my work. There's always a softness that aesthetically I'm drawn to, mm -hmm. that I hope to convey, um, that elicits a sense of peace and calmness for the viewer. Yes, this one is called Midwest Dream. Yes. Um, and actually, the way that you were describing that, I noticed that in some of your work, in your other, in the other part of your portfolio, um, when I look at these pieces, when I look at your standard art, uh, oil. is it is it is yes the oil paintings mm -hmm. is I, I don't. I don't. I hope it's not sounding like I'm belittling it. I call it standard, and I'm no. just trying to say. Um, but more of the canvas-driven art. Uh huh. Um, it is. It is very peaceful, but it's very colorful. You are. I, I think of this one in particular, uh, which is soul. That's all it's known as right now is soul. <laughs> um, but there is a calmness. It, it kind of gives me. It's like I can't. This. This is where I have a hard time figuring out the color schemes between dawn and dusk. Mm -hmm. But one of those two things mm -hmm. that's what i'm feeling when i see that just yeah. the 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 fiery red i'm so i'm going to say dawn because yeah. of the fiery red that comes out of the clouds mm -hmm. it, just on those certain mornings when you look up at the sky and it's just like there's a fire in the sky yeah and that's what i get from that piece but there's i some people can get overwhelmed by that but i find a kind of a piece behind that i do too and you know i grew up in a small agricultural community in northwestern ohio that was very flat with big wide open vistas, much like the rural areas right outside of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So I find myself being drawn to that kind of landscape because it's so familiar to me. And also because that rural, peaceful, wide open sky and big landscapes, those are kind of disappearing. As cities grow and spread, 
out to those areas, those, you know, they're disappearing. And, and I really want to celebrate mm -hmm. those scenes and capture just a snippet of a moment mm -hmm. and paint that and, and celebrate it and knowing that it can be so beautiful and really peaceful and um, really needs to be honored. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why I love to paint landscapes and so many different colors in the sky. I really just love watching the sunrise and the sunset. And actually the other morning I was watching the sunrise and I was watching the clouds and they were purple. And then right before my eyes, they just turned pink. And oh, wow. it's such a magical moment. And it's those moments that I try to capture mm -hmm. with color. And that then conveys emotion to the viewer. And often I am just trying to convey peace and healing and um, calm and joy. Now there is there is a sense of tranquility that I see in in your work with oils. Um, it is this is what I this is the the kind of the oils that I really like mm -hmm. when I look at uh, th those kinds of paintings. This one. Uh, right here kind of gives me whoop oh, there we go um also so dang um this one kind of gives me a bit of the impressionist kind of a feel and i was i'm a big fan of impressionist art a lot of people describe them as atmospheric mm -hmm. um i've been described as a colorist color is something that is very innate to me so Oftentimes when I'm starting a painting, I'll just start with a color mm -hmm. and then see what comes from there. So I may not have a specific color palette in mind as I'm working or even have an outcome that I want to achieve, but I, I let the process sort of dictate what the painting develops into. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I want to transition real quick into... What was it like as you were figuring out you were becoming an artist um, growing up? Who are your inspirations and, and who are your inspirations now? So, you know, it was interesting because when I was a student, I was, I was a good student. Mm -hmm. I had a, I could memorize things. And so I was a test taker that did pretty well. And, you know, um, I was always told that good students become doctors or lawyers. Mm -hmm. And so I always thought that I would become a doctor. And then my family moved when I was in high school and it was a brand new city, new people, new environment. And it was a tough time to move. And there was a really great art department at that high school. And I spent so much time in art classes and I just found my calm. I found my center, it was therapeutic for me, and I just wanted to spend all my time making art. Hmm. And so when I went to the orientation uh, at Miami University, I was sitting in the pre-med major um, building, and they were talking about all of the classes that I was going to have to take, and it was a lot of organic chemistry and biology. and those classes just never interested me sure. at all. Yeah. And so I turned to my mom and I said, you know what? I don't want to be here. And she said, what do you mean you don't <laughs> want to be here? And I said, I want to be an art major. And so she said, um, okay, well then let's go. So we stood up in the middle of orientation and we walked out and we found the art building and I found one of the professors and I told him my situation and he said, welcome to the art school. We'll make it happen. And so from there, wow. I just really dove in mm -hmm. to making art. And that was the, the start of my journey. That is an incredible story. Yeah. That is an incredible story. Who, when you got into art school, you know, who are you looking to as like, this is this is what I want to be like? Or was it just something that when you dove into it, you found your own voice? That's exactly what happened. I had a couple really influential professors mm -hmm. who helped guide me through the process of finding out how I liked to paint and what I liked to create. Mm -hmm. And really it focused on color and I was an abstract painter 
Hmm. Um, when I first graduated and during my career and how I developed initially as an artist, one of my greatest um, influences was probably Helen Frankenthaler, a painter from the 50s. And she, her paintings are really atmospheric and color based. And I would say that I am still influenced by her work. That is incredible. Well, I can see that, especially when in your works with oils and acrylics. Um, there is a lot of, of cloud work that I see here. Um, and it's, it's all beautiful, very atmospheric, very tranquil. Um, kind of getting back to that, what you were talking about before about the, the, the feelings you try to evoke with the work that you do. Yeah. Um, let's get back real quick to the murals if we, if we yeah. can, just because I feel sure. like this is, um, I feel like this is how people are going to kind of run into you. Yeah. Literally, in some cases. Right. It's a really great way to showcase what you do um, at a public level. Mm -hmm. So I want to get to the... To, so we're looking at the exterior murals now. Yes. So the, these are the ones that are far more public. Yeah. Um, and I will say the ones that I eventually came across again... That it wasn't until I was looking through your portfolio that I realized, oh, that's yours. Uh huh. Um, the essential. Uh huh. Um, which you give the definition. So right. um, this was co-created with the Department of Public Works, um, and it's the yeah the definition essential, absolutely necessary, extremely important. Um, what was the impetus behind this one? Okay, so I worked um, with a nonprofit arts organization here called the Department of Public Words. And oh, words, my yeah, bad, my bad. It's okay. It's a common, common mistake. But when I first graduated from college, I guess we'll have to go back just a little bit of story. Time That's here. okay. Um, and my husband was in grad school. I worked for a nonprofit arts organization called Artworks, and it was a job training through the arts program for youth. And one of the projects that we did with them was murals. Mm -hmm. And they had such an impact, and I always loved the amazingness that they created. And so when we moved here, I always was making art in some capacity. And I have two boys, and so my time was spent taking care of them, making art. And then when I when, was given the opportunity, this organization needed a, a grants director. And so I initially was helping write grants and get funding for the organization. But being a painter and an artist, I really wanted to be painting, and I knew that murals you know, were so impactful and that we could potentially do something similar. And so we started a mural program and I um, coordinated many community murals. So I would get the funding for them and involve the community to either help with the design or help with the actual painting. And this was one of those projects. Mm -hmm. And so because we were the Department of Public Words, putting positive messages in public spaces through art and education, uh -huh. it was always a component of everything that we did. So uh, this is a building that's right on the Monon Trail. Mm -hmm. And being a colorist, I love the ombre and the, the siding and the stripes lend themselves to creating um, just a really beautiful gradation. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that design came from. And then, you know, the, the Monon Trail is used by so many people and mental health has played a big role in a lot of the murals that we did and the messaging that we wanted to get across. And so Essential just is exactly that. Everybody who passes it, we want the, we wanted them to know that they were essential, they were needed, mm -hmm. we wanted them there. Now, I honestly, that's something that I kind of felt as I was as I would run past it, you know, every other day. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are curious where this is, this is at about... 46. 46? I was going to say 48, but 46, yes. Um, 46 along the Monon Trail. Um, and then the other one that I just realized today that was yours. Um, here, uh, I feel like I've seen that one someplace. I can't recall, but... Uh, that was the the angels wings that uh, indie angel wings. That's the first one that I realized that was yours. Yeah, so that's a collaboration with my artist friend Jamie Locke. She mm -hmm. and I 
have painted wings and she does mandalas so just north of there is a mural that's all mandalas and then there's yes. um, some text on that and we asked the neighbors to define uh, what describes the neighborhood so they chose words like respect community diversity really that's beautiful. yeah and that's the that's the one that I was getting to that um, there it is there it is as as my run started getting longer, uh-huh. you made it to that. <laughs> I made point. it to this mural, yeah. Uh, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> did you, Megan did that one too," <laughs> along with Jamie Locke and the Department of Public Words. Yes, um, it is a beautiful uh, set of mandalas and with the words. It is, uh, and you catch in the different seasons here. Um, so yeah, um, what was the impetus behind this one again? That was a community um, project as well. It was funded by the neighborhood, and then we involved the community, and we asked them to describe the neighborhood, so we chose to put the words that they picked oh, onto. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, onto the walls. That is, it is, I mean, we were looking at vibrant, harmony, love, peace. Um, sounds like a great neighborhood to live in. It is. <laughs> um, and then... You've, you've also done, like, leading it off the whole thing, um, you've done what I find fascinating that Jiffy Loop is, it does. I mean... It is quite a project. It's amazing. This one, I believe... It's where, an Avon. Okay, it's an Avon. But is this something that all Jiffy Lubes do? Well... Because I'm honestly, when I'm thinking art, yeah. I'm not thinking Jiffy Lube. Yeah. Um, I'm incredibly proud to have been a part of this project for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it initially came about, I was on the Monon repairing um, a mural that somebody had sprayed graffiti on, mm. one of our Department of Public Words murals, and I was painting over that to maintain it. And um, a woman who worked in the marketing department at Jiffy Lube was passing by and stopped to talk to me. And she said, you know, our Jiffy Lube store in Broad Ripple keeps getting tagged. And we have talked about painting a mural on it. Do murals um, encourage more tagging or does that, you know, prevent people from tagging things? And typically, it really prevents people from tagging. Really? When you beautify a space, people respect it more, especially Mm -hmm. if you can involve the community. They take ownership and pride in that space. And it is amazing how... It uplifts and beautifies and adds positivity to a neighborhood. So after we had that conversation, she went back and talked to the owner who had been wanting to put murals on the sides of his building. And he owns many, many Jiffy Lubes in the state of Indiana. I was going to say, I've seen murals on other Jiffy Lubes in the area. So are they all owned by the same? Yes. Okay. So that makes sense. Steve Sanner. Yeah. He had this amazing vision and this was in 2015. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Public Words, Dave and Holly Combs and I met with him and talked about his dream of doing this. And so uh, we started with five Jiffy Lubes and we helped get that process started. So we we juried in different artists from Indianapolis. We involved the community to help paint those murals and installed them on different Jiffy Lubes. When the Department of Public Words closed, the project um, moved over to work with the Arts Council. And okay. so they have continued the program It has won national awards, and every year they do five or six buildings and employ these artists and celebrate these neighborhoods. Now, the cool thing is that they don't want the art to have anything to do with oil changes. There's no advertising. It is all about supporting the artists and celebrating the communities where these stores are. That is incredible. It is incredible. So I was lucky enough to be chosen as one of the artists to paint this mm-hmm. on the side of the Avon Jiffy Lube. And actually just this past summer, I was invited to be a teaching artist and guide the Avon High School kids through the process of creating a mural so we can teach and grow them as artists. And so the other That's side of the building mm-hmm. has the mural that I did with those students. Is that featured here as well? Because I feel it like is. I saw something. Is um... It's actually in my 2022 2000. Okay, yeah. let's, let's go check that out real quick. 
Oh yes, I think I remember seeing that. Um, where because you were sent was it a picture with you and the students? Uh, let's. Uh, I'm surprised it's not on there. Maybe I haven't included. It. Oh, it's right there. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I thought I had it on there. Yeah. All right. So, um, it and is, this was done. This was done with um, the students. The Avon students. Yep. That so is fantastic. It's a sunset mm -hmm. as this you face west as you're driving past this, and then the other side is a sunrise. And the other side was uh -huh. influenced and inspired by the rural areas out in Avon again to celebrate the beauty of those wide open vistas. Mm -hmm. And so we built upon that theme, and the students designed every aspect of this piece. That was fantastic. I, I, I can really appreciate that, um, I mean, the skill that they were able to, to do there. And you were helped help bring that out, out of them, yeah. which is, which is very cool. Fun. They were great. I do have to ask about this one, your yeah. besties bus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is incredible. Like Thank you did you. that entire paint job. I, Yes, my friend did help me. This is, um, she does the van life thing. So this is where she lives. And uh, this is right outside of Zion National Park. So it's oh, in wow. the desert. And she spends a lot of time there. And so we wanted to celebrate the sky there and the, the flowers and the cacti. Mm -hmm. And so that's all desert inspired. And so we painted cool. that. Yeah. That is so cool. She really stands out. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's a nice little bus she's got there. It's beautiful. Um, so, okay. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you is, so you're at the Harrison Center. What is your relationship like with the, with the Harrison Center? How did that come about? It's great. You know, they, they have studios for 30 artists, five galleries. That space is constantly changing. The administration works so hard to engage the community and uh, support artists. It's been really great having a studio there. Mm -hmm. And I have my own space to create, which is really nice. Um, it's a great community of artists and it's a lot of support from the admin people and it's, it's just been a, it's been a really good thing for me. Fantastic. Were you able to get in that uh, in that community when you moved to Indianapolis, or how did that come about? No, I've always had a studio actually um, in my garage, mm -hmm. and then as my kids got older and I had more time to devote to my own art practice, I decided I wanted to look for a space outside of of my home, and um, that's when I found that space. That's very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. You have a very she so. If you're at the Harrison Center, especially on like on a first Friday, yeah. uh, which I always recommend checking out the Harrison Center on, on first Fridays, uh, you are in what is known as the underground. Yep. Um, and uh, so if you're going into the underground, depends on which direction you're coming from, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you're, it's, it's a wide open space. And so basically if you're, let's just say you're facing the stage because there's a big stage down yeah. there. Uh, you are in, you're, you're, uh, gallery, your studio uh -huh. is in the back stage left. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Which for people that's on your right. Um, but that's stage left. Um, and it's right, right back in that corner, correct? Yep. Well, I see. I remembered. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's great. Uh, and we had uh, one of your fellow, uh, Harrison Center artists on here previously, Kate Overreich. Um, so it's good to continue to, to get more of, uh, of you guys here on the podcast. Um, is there anything else that you feel like we really should touch on here? Uh, because, I mean, there is just, there really is so much. And I really don't want to miss out on anything. You know, I, there's one mural that I always love right telling Hold the up. story about because mm -hmm. people find it so interesting. And it specifically uh, relates to Indianapolis. So maybe I'll just tell the story of this one. Please do. And it's this mural right here. For Datsa Pizza? For on the Datsa, Datsa pizza. pizza. Yeah. Miss Pink's Recollections. Yes. So yeah, what's what's this one? Because describe it for if you're telling the story here and yeah. people I don't know if they'll be able to see it online. So uh, for for people who can't see this, what are they are what are you describing here? So this is probably this wall is twenty feet high by probably twenty five to thirty feet wide, and the top slopes up and has a chimney above it, and it looks like an open book if you were looking at a book from the <gasps> yes, from the edge. Yes, I do see so, that. Yes. Um, 
I guess there's not really a good picture of that part, but this was an interesting assignment. So this is kind of talks about my process when I work with clients and it also tells a really cool story. Mm -hmm. um, this was a project that was in partnership with the Arts Council. So their staff helped paint this mural. It is right near their building, just north of the Central Library on Pennsylvania. So 9th and Penn. Okay. And I was tasked with the assignment to include elements of the past and also talk about how the, um, the neighborhood is currently. So blend the past with the present. Gotcha. And I walked around with the Neighborhood Association and they pointed out all of these really historical buildings. So you can see in the background, you have all of these architectural elements that were taken from the designs of buildings. Yeah. And those were sprayed in a metallic, so you can really only see them when the light hits them just right, mm -hmm. which to me shows a visual element of the passing of time. Right, they kind of disappear, but at times you can still see them and they're remnants of the past. The library being right there, um, I made the roof into an open book with letters falling out because I learned that Pink Cathcart lived in a house right on that corner at the turn of the century in Indianapolis. Oh, really? So she wrote a book about what Indianapolis was like at that time. And some fascinating facts about that time. Um, you had to be careful when you were taking the trash out because people were often attacked by bears. Well, in, in the city? Yes. <laughs> what the heck? It was, Pennsylvania was like the social street of Indianapolis and there were mule pulled carts that would go down the street and people would walk every night. It was kind of like the social walk scene. It was also very in vogue to own uh, exotic animals. Like and bears? Like lions and tigers. <laughs> so in the world? People walked them on leashes. Lions and tigers. In downtown Indianapolis. <laughs> I am loving this story. It's bizarre. It is very bizarre. And... Pink's father owned a bookstore that was right on the circle, mm -hmm. which women were not allowed in because they were considered too feeble-minded to be able to read. What? Yes. And oh my so, gosh. But since her father owned it, she would go and read the books, of course, mm. all the time. Um, so she loved to write, which is why she wrote this book. And then she was a nurse. So during World War II, she left and our World War One came back. Mm -hmm. And then she wrote a letter to her cousin and drew a picture describing how that neighborhood had changed. And so out of the pages of the book are her words. And so she said, the drawing is far from perfect, which was the drawing of the neighborhood that she included. But that is an invitation to everyone you can be an artist, even if you don't know how to draw, even if the drawing is far from perfect, you can still convey a message, be creative, and be artistic. That is beautiful. Yeah. I love that story. And, and now I feel like, you know, I understand this piece so much more. I love the stories behind some of these things. Your work has been incredible. Um, and I look forward to seeing more because I really enjoy what I do see. So either I need to start running up more of the Monon, um, or we need to figure out that wall, one of the two. That sounds great. Um, Megan, thank you for being on the podcast this week. Before we say goodbye, where can people find you uh, socially, on the internet? I, we mentioned the website, jeffersonartstudio.com, but we're... Yeah, I'm we're, most active on Instagram. So you can find me there by searching my name, Megan Jefferson, or... Um, my handle, which is Megs J One Art, M E G S J One Art. I also sell watercolors on Etsy, Megan Jefferson Art, and on Facebook, I am Jefferson Art Studio. I encourage everyone to check it out because Megan is very talented. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being on this week's show. It was my pleasure. All right, that's going to do it for us here on uh, the podcast. And my next guest will be for the live stream. I believe I don't want to. I don't want to give it away yet because I'm still lining things up. But 
it might be the Ban Huxley. I'm just saying, I, don't don't hold me to it, but we'll see. Um, anyway, that's that's gonna do it for us. Thank you for tuning in this week, and uh, we'll see you again next time.